Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fathoms Deep, a Black Sales podcast from Common Room Radio. I'm Elizabeth Stevens. I'm Daphne Olive, and we have the hardest to get guest that we've been waiting <laughs> for ages to have. Welcome, Luke Roberts. Thank you so much. How lovely of you to have me over. The funny thing, I got scared for a second that I was going to do some combination of your name and Woods Rogers because we did that so many times by accident. So many yeah. edits. It's yeah, and mine is is close. It right. is. I, I, thinking about changing it, um, actually. <laughs> Rogers is strong. It's strong. Rogers is a good. Yeah. Well. Well, well the I'm, name Woods. Is there a more manly, masculine name than Woods? I mean, who just want to make out with that guy? I mean, he was an asshole, but you know, in oh. theory, if I just met him at a bar. I'm sorry, Liz. You spent all of season three wanting to make out with that guy. So. Yeah. Oh God, Luke! Oh, wow. are, we, are we embarrassing you? Sorry. Uh, no, no, I, I, I haven't been listening at all. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, but you you know you know what his um great grandfather possibly his grandfather was called because there were there were he was um that's right he was uh Woods Rogers son of Woods Rogers who was son of Woods Rogers who was son of Nobbit Rogers. Oh, that's so good! I was not ready for that. <laughs> Yeah, That's just when he thought, just when he thought it couldn't get worse. I mean, I could be fabulous. wrong. Then maybe, maybe it was a nephew. It possibly was Woods' nephew who was called Nobbit. But, you know uh, what? It's just like the family had to compensate for something at that point. Absolutely. <laughs> I just know that you know a lot of ships and a lot of wood involved, and that's um, and that's important. <laughs> there you go. Good. So now, we've got off to a sophisticated start. Yes, that's, we have. That's perfect. amazing. And it's funny because our kind of not sophisticated start relates to what my first question was going to be, because I'm pretty sure that Hannah said that of everyone, you might be the person who did the most research about your character. Um, um, so tell us. Gosh, that was that was that was that was generous of her. That was kind of her. Um, <laughs> she's a sweetheart. Yeah, oh, she noticed. is. She's a, she, <laughs> I have noticed. She is, she's absolutely adorable and lovely to work with. Um, hi, Hannah. Um, so, uh, I sounded a little bit like, uh, Alex Sakharov there. I, I went a bit deep and went, hi, Hannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, and, I'm yeah. sure she'll be fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I did. I mean, I, I try and, I mean, I've been fortunate to play, um, a few historical characters of late and, um, you sort of, I suppose you do have a, there's a, there's a, a, a duty of care, isn't there? When you're sort of playing someone who, really lived and breathed and and so you mm. feel oh I, I better give a fair portrayal i mean it won't necessarily be truly accurate because it's a, a while ago and all we have is a few sort of um uh, stencils of these people right. but there's uh, there's historical accounts and i you know i yeah basically i just uh, gorged myself on on woods rogers material and i, I remember when I, when i was cast going through this stuff and it's quite dry historically that the, the or rather um, historical records of him are quite dry. Um, and yet it's sort of a, an incredible, I don't know, almanac or, or chronicle of, of, of feats. He did so much. He, did he was so sort of one much. of the, yeah, he did so much. He was one of the first circumnavigators and of the, the world. And, um, no way. It, it, and he, obviously he was, um, he was the inspiration for the Robinson Crusoe, um, story, Defoe's, um, classic novel. And he was he was the captain who rescued Alexander Selkirk, who was a who was a Scottish um, uh, seaman who had been stranded on the island Ferdinand something. Um, I've, I've obviously researched this so well, I can't remember the names. But um, well, the yeah, funny thing he, is that uh, actually comes up in an episode I, we're going to release soon that Liz wasn't there for. But I talked to Natasha Simonova, who is a literature professor, and she talked about that as well about Woods Rogers, which uh, I love. So yes. Yes. That stuff you said with the Robinson Crusoe, she said that. I don't remember the specifics either. <laughs> so he is um, quite, or was quite quite a man. And obviously he had um, his uh, his youth as a privateer, um, which is sort of, you know, a, a, a government commissioned or a crown commissioned um, pirate, essentially, under the British flag. So he, and, you know, with a, I, I guess, a mandate to knock off any foreign vessels in time of war, particularly the Spanish, because they were always at war with the Spanish, uh, occasionally the French. But um, yeah, so he, he was an incredible sailor and uh, captain and, you know, entrepreneur. And the, really, the list goes on. And it was kind of fascinating to get under the skin of him and and, uh, and read about it. And I guess I drew my own conclusions as I went along and thought mm -hmm. this guy was, you know, I think they were just generally a hardier lot back then. Um, you know, life was... Um, 
which is tougher, maybe cheaper. But um, he, uh, yeah, he'd, he'd done all these in, in, incredible things. And I, I, but I sensed he was fairly brutal when required. He has a, right. he has a very English manner in the way he writes. Um, it's quite spare because as he suggests at the beginning of his um, cruising voyage around the world, um, where he documents all these um, skirmishes that he had with the Spanish. And I, you know, it, it is a, a little while ago, but I, I think he came back with them. Um, nine <laughs> nine spanish vessels um I, I i that could be wrong with the number but and his own two original boats so it was ah. a, by all accounts it was a massive massive success and he was a war hero he was a national hero and um yeah it was just kind of amazing to to read all this stuff but i sensed that he was quite he, he would have made some very difficult decisions and there was a brutality i suspect and you know i obviously don't know this for fact but in and amongst these sort of dry lines about what he had achieved I thought there's there's more to this, and um, of course I get introduced in the show as uh, you know a, a very uh, civilized, um, reasonable mm-hmm. diplomat. Yeah. Um, but I I was sort of intrigued by the possibility, and of course you know you're only given the material you're given, and it was very rich the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, you know John, Robert, and Dan um, just don't do anything by halves, and it was just I- incredible and. Um, so, but reading between the lines, their lines and the historical lines about the guy, I was like, "There's, there's something else going on here," and, um, and that I sort of wanted to mine, and I suppose, um, or at least I, I certainly attempted to suggest that that there was a hardness and a sort of a uh, almost un- unstoppable determination um, mm. to meet his own goals, and, um, and unstoppable is is quite a formidable and quite frightening prospect really um especially when you have the wherewithal and the means and the you know and the, and the money and i mean he he, he just yeah I, I i had notions that because I, I read that um i'm gonna call this the wrong thing but it's i think it's a, a pagoda or a proa or a pagoa or anyway somebody you know um probably our our, our, our naval advisors will or our, our um Nautical advisors will will get in touch immediately, but there was a Filipino um, ship that he spotted, and it was a, a, a effectively uh, an early catamaran. Mm-hmm. And he saw the design, and he saw the speed, and he actually, I think, he deconstructed it and put it on board his boat and reassembled it somewhere else, and took the design because he was like, you know, this is this is an Im- Im- impressive um, craft. And so that he, that he had that sort of entrepreneurial spirit. He borrowed all the best ideas. And I had this notion because I started learning um, the Filipino art of um, uh, Cali, which is sort of like a two stick fighting um, fight really. Um, and, mm-hmm. uh, Very cool. and, and so I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun if we incorporate some of those moves because rather like the ships, I, I imagine he would have, sort of observed how effective it was um and and maybe borrowed it and so i i was i'm I'm going all over the place now but i i remember speaking to the stunt team and saying wouldn't it be fun to have sort of a like an eastern signature move for this guy something with a bit of a not not a terrible not a typical sort of english um naval fencing technique but something else just Mm -hmm. something a bit exotic so um you know they they allowed me to incorporate that which is that's so cool. cool Yeah, I mean, he's just, he, he, there were a lot of influences and he traveled the world and he'd seen right. more than most had. Um, so I, I guess to answer your question, um, yes, I did a, a lot of research. <laughs> no, this is, I mean, that's so interesting. I kind of, I I did not do that much research. I've read um, the the Republic of Pirates. That I read that. <clears throat> yes, that was, that was the extent brilliant. of my historical research for podcasting no but that's, that's i think that's the best i think that's the best one i read a, a, a few and that one yeah, it's just, sort of gripped me yeah sure. it's just yeah. really well written and fun and gives you it enough is. information about each historical person no but what's interesting to me you saying this after we there's one thing that zach mcgowan said when we interviewed him not so long ago where he talked about how um and i guess actually hannah touched on this as well but zach really talked about how how for Vane, like he didn't even know, like even Charlestown was like this huge thing for him because all he had ever known was NASA. Like NASA was civilization for him. And so him in relation to Flint, this was this interesting thing that like Flint had come from the larger world. And so Vane saw Flint up until, you know, and basically up until Woods Rogers showed up as kind of the representative of civilization. And Mm -hmm. 
And Hannah talked about that in relation to Eleanor, that Eleanor like lived in this crossroads that everyone came to. Everyone brought things there from the, around the world. But Eleanor was, you know, that's all she knew. All she knew was NASA. And yes, so, absolutely. so if anything, it's really interesting to have Woods Rogers, you know, if you do a spectrum of the characters in relation to how much of the world they understand, like Jack, obviously from England and God knows, probably from the Caribbean, like from her backstory, um, that Woods Rogers, like so much above and beyond everyone else, like Flint was a naval officer, so he probably also did stuff, but probably not to that extent. No, quite. Yeah. I love that you put that into the fighting style. And Toby Schmitz had told us that everyone kind of had a specific kind of character driven fighting style. Absolutely. I mean, that was what was so clever about the show. Like um, in every department, it was sort of, um, you, you could feel, um, it was very inclusive, very collaborative. And, and from what I saw in the two seasons, it was such a tight knit thing. And, and every department um, was interested in the narrative mm -hmm. and they wanted to lend their services to this sort of rich, cleverly interwoven um, story that the, the, the guys were writing. And um, you, you feel, I mean, I feel that the, the, the scenery is a, is a character. I mean, NASA was mm -hmm. obviously a, a, a principal character in this thing. And, you know, Wolf's um, set design. I mean, everything. It just, it, it, it really sort of, they, they so cleverly, all the departments and, um, that conjured this, this world. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it was, uh, it, it is interesting the way each of the characters has their own, um, own perspective. And as you say, their own fighting style. And it's, you know, it, it, it felt, there was a great deal of authenticity across the board, you know, amongst the, certainly amongst the actors and, and, and all the other departments. Um, and it, it just felt well thought out and, mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of in drama, I guess, you know, it's will sound rather hackneyed, but it's, it's about, it's about specificity. Um, you know, performance is about specificity and, you know, and then it's, it's interesting seeing all these different influences then clash on screen. Um, but uh, yeah, Woods has a very holistic view. I think he's, and that's that, that's the great thing, and that's sort of the, um, the the tagline, I suppose, for my character is that he he sort of um, he knows these people, um, and he sort of almost is a, each and every one of them. There's yeah. a, there's a, a, a he he really he, he's he has an enormous amount of confidence. I think when he comes in, that this is going to be achievable. Uh, and of course, then it's fun to see him knock down a peg or two by the resourcefulness of all our heroes. <laughs> uh -huh. But 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 he, or, he definitely yeah he definitely or continually knocked down. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely. And, and again, that's you know that was that's true to history. And I I really was impressed um, because I you know sure I'd done my research and it was very much sort of uh, Woods Rogers centric. But um, the guys had obviously done their research too. They knew the stories well, and and I was so. Um, delighted and gratified that my storylines um, really did follow the historical accounts of, yeah. of what happened to these guys and particularly to Woods Rogers. I mean, his story comes in and it's, it, it's great because it's obviously the, the, the show is this wonderful mashup of sort of fantasy um, history and literature. And, um, you know, I suppose when my guy comes in, he, he's, he, he's more historical than anything, but then they've taken liberties, but they're all, feasible ones yeah. and um wonderfully character driven sort of um i don't know if they are liberties it's it's a it's a version and a, a very entertaining one and i i you know one hopes that your own bit fits in with what's gone before and it, and it, it really it, it felt like they knew what they were doing and that's um you know that's everything <laughs> you know it's like mm. it's like when the dir directors come on board and they they've storyboarded it they've got these great ideas um and they know where it's going and then of course you know, the, I don't know, for, for me, you know, the mark of great writers and, and producers is that they then spot what's going on between the actors. And then mm -hmm. they sort of, um, sort of tease that out more. And they say, Oh, well, that that's really interesting. Let's, let's have more of that, but let's just spice it up by throwing in this grenade of, you know, difficulty. So yeah, it was, it was, it was really, really, I'm just, talking about the show now but i thought it was such a such a such a clever show um and and so proud to be on it yeah we encourage everyone to talk about the show generally because um it is so holistic yeah i just feel like i came up with five questions while you were talking 
Go on. Well, you, you know, I, you, I probably won't answer any of them, but uh, give, give it a shot. I, well, okay. So I was going to skip the ones that I had already done. Like what you said about, uh, I mean, this is, this is on my list, but I guess I'm skipping down my list a little bit. What you said about, um, about the writers seeing what's going on between actors and kind of riffing off of that. Mm. Uh, you and Toby, like the whole Rogers yeah. Rackham thing, like that was really quite magical. And mm -hmm. well, it was yeah, it was an absolute pleasure that, and it, it sort of, I mean, it happened quite early on, I think. And um, it, you know, to, 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 Toby, he's very particular about his library. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, and they they just you know they had they have such faith um, rightly in, in in Toby to deliver these incredible lines because he's just such a a master when it comes comes to that i thoroughly enjoyed it but i i frankly wouldn't walk into a room and and, and attempt to um verbally spar with toby schmitz and and um, <laughs> and yet you did and, and, unless it had been unless it and, unless it had been penned by john steinberg right. and shots fair from Robert Levine. yes fair enough um no, he's, you played no, he's, it off he's very well. <laughs> yeah, well, we I think we really had fun. Um, we really had fun, and I think that's that, that's half of it. And, and why wouldn't you? I mean, I suppose for Toby, it was sort of, uh, or for rather for um, Rackham, it's it's sort of finally a sort of a a, a, a mental. I mean, Flint obviously um, is is right up there, but um, sort of a, a mental adversary. Yeah. Um, yes. That he can really really pit his wits against and um and indeed he does and it's it's great i i it was a that was a joy absolute joy and it's sort of a gentle sort of very english passive aggressive kind of one-upmanship and well, um until it becomes it you know terrifying in season four <laughs> Just, oh, straight sure. up aggressive. Well, just, just straight up aggressive. Just straight up aggressive. Well, I was going to ask Luke if, um, it, well, just how much you knew about what they were going to do with Woods Rogers when you came on the show, which is, I suppose, the broader question is how much they knew, but right. specifically what you knew going well, in. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I had no idea. I, I really didn't know where they were going to go with it. I, I sort of, as I said, I, you know, I was reading between the lines, thinking, mm -hmm. oh, "Gosh, there's this, there's there's another dimension to this chap." You know, he can't have actually done these things. I mean. For ultimately, you know, he he was jailed um, uh, because he had run himself into financial ruin to try and preserve the island mm -hmm. years later, and or, well, we sort of reached that point um, in in our version of it. Um, and of course, Jack Rackham wrote the affidavits. Absolutely, Jack Rackham wrote the affidavits, <laughs> which, is, which which is which is a lovely flourish of the quill on the part of the of the creators. Absolutely, I love that. Can all that. Be but such it, joy. <laughs> Yeah, it just yeah. I mean, just brilliant, just brilliant, and um, and really um, played very delicately by Toby. I thought, and mm -hmm. you know, it could have been sort of really. Um, he, he could have done it in a gloating manner, but it's just it's just delightful, and we all sort of relish it with him. But it's I was, I was just going to say that um, this guy was um, liberated from jail by the king himself. You know, after a petition was made, mm -hmm. and he was sent back to the Bahamas to govern the island. You know, so this is the postscript, I suppose, um, for my character, mm -hmm. but. Um, it, that's quite something, you know, so, um, pe people, obviously this was a man who could get things done and that was really, um, exciting to play. Um, I struggle to, you know, get through breakfast. Um, you know, it's sort of it, this, this guy, this is big stuff, big audience, big schemes, big plans. And, you know, just for for the, the fun, fun bit of trivia, like his whole plan was actually um, intended for Madagascar and the uh, oh right, and, right. And, and the pirates who were were based in that area, um, and he took it home as a proposition. Said, "Listen, I can I can clean this up. And we can regain it and have it as a as a great stop off, a great trading point." And um, it was the East India Company, the big corporation of the day, that. Um, that kiboshed that and they stopped it um, because they didn't want a rival sort of um, port uh, trading sort of mm. um, stop point. So, so he was like, okay. And he was just very quickly quick to adapt and took the whole plan over to the Bahamas mm. and said, well, I'll do it here instead. And of course, then he met this uh, colorful collection of characters who were not the complacent pirates who were ready to s snuggle up um, to the, uh, the empire again and um so yeah he, he took his plan and um applied it to a much uh 
much more resistant uh, crowd of uh, rum swellers. Swellers. Swellers? <laughs> swellers, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know what swellers would be exactly. Um, yeah, there is, an ir- <laughs> there, is, there is an irony that in Black Sales World, Rogers seems like basically a person following up on someone else's great idea when in fact it was Woods Rogers' great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When well, he's... that's that's it. I mean, he, yes, he is the he is the empire, isn't he? He's the right. he's the face of he's the he's the personification of the British Empire and everything that's wrong with it, um, and that that imperialistic drive. But I, I think actually, you know, he was an entrepreneur, and I think right. that, that sort of I suppose that helped because it, it, it helped to play it because you you know you can't play I am the representative of the crown, but you can play somebody who's on a personal mission. And, you know, you invent mm. and you read up and you sort of create or, or, or glean reasons, personal, deep, emotional reasons as to why you want this to work. And um, that was kind of cool because it, at the beginning it was sort of rather abstract concepts. Like, why are you here? Well, I'm <laughs> my character is there to to sort of um, reinstate commerce. Mm-hmm. And that's that that's not very playable. Uh, you know, you, you can say it, but. Like, there's no meat there yeah no, no but but of course there was great sort of underlying meat because it was it, it meant so much more than that it was about civilization itself and that's what's so great about the show everybody's got their own interpretation of how the world should be formed and yes. um, you know and in, in 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 the um in the uh, the person or the the island that is nassau and so it's sort of it's re- really really exciting interesting political philosophical um, sort of questions are asked in the show and everyone has a slightly different answer and it's it's kind of cool as seeing where there's overlap between I don't know maybe Woods's character and Jack Rackham and Flint and Woods and you know um, all of them they all have a, a different take if only they had banded together and 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 done it you know in a, in a wonderful um collective manner but of course then we would have mm. no drama right there would have been no story no well, and there's no way that show was rogers i feel like we have to now delineate yes i was just thinking that because i had a question in my head and i was like i have to make sure that i right. say exactly what i'm referring so, to <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah there was no way for show woods rogers uh <laughs> to anticipate what flint's state of mind would be uh which i think is beautifully illustrated by how many times he said thomas hamilton to him during that meeting <laughs> he just kept saying it over and over again i know well, I was, it's, it's interesting because because that obviously like, dude he's twitching don't you know that when flint twitches you're supposed to stop saying something <laughs> yeah i found that that's that scene I, I mean i it was um you know it was a joy it was like such a a, a privilege to work with um toby i like i've admired him for years and it was it was really cool and um, well, when you shoot it obviously you shoot it um, many different angles and sure. and and i i i was playing um a, a suggestion but i was i was trying to make it enigmatic as to how much i knew mm-hmm. uh, yes. about their relationship that worked yeah it came across <laughs> yes <Well>, huge <laughs> huge twitter debates over how much <laughs> how yeah much but, but Woods they, Rogers they, knew. <laughs> they, yeah absolutely and so it's it but it, but the way you know they way they edit it um they didn't, and I think absolutely rightly, they didn't dwell on me for that. For that, and sure. it sort of made it more, even more sort of um, questionable and more enigmatic. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, I suppose there was that other guy in the scene, Toby Stevens, who was quite good to play some of the <laughs> some of the drama off. He's he, 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 he's all time, right from time to time. You know, he hits the right beat. I will I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Arnold told us that you all used to talk to each other about staring into Flint today. Was that your st- big staring into Flint moment? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Staring <laughs> and, and getting getting lost in those baby blues. Um, <laughs> we know how you feel. But Dan, 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 yeah. Oh God, yeah. Dan, Dan Schatz would say, um, um, uh, he well, Dan Schatz always liked this because I was like, um, we, you know, we had shot a lot of uh, episodes before I got to that point, which was kind of nice to spend time before you to earn the right to do the scene with Toby and um, mm-hmm. Sir, Sir Toby of Stevens, uh, as I like to call him. Um, I won't, I won't tell you what he calls me, but uh, oh, well, now you have uh, to. I'm sorry, you you actually have to. There's absolutely <laughs> no way I can say those utter those words on 
<laughs> on radio or in a podcast. I am so curious yeah, now. Yeah, we do have an explicit rating. Goodness, Daphne. <laughs> it's so, it's no, so no, wrong. You it's really right, don't, but you really don't have to. <laughs> no, right. Oh, all right. No, no, I'm good. I went, I went. But um, it, it, he, uh, D- Dan loves the story because I, I literally, I, I, I again, I. <laughs> I can't really use my own language here. There's there's so much territory which cannot be uh, charted, and, <laughs> but it was um, it was that just that moment of seeing him jumping out of the boat and, and walking up the sand. I was like, Jesus Christ! You know, there's that's Flint. It's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> you know, with all the with all the you know the acting chops that that Toby brings mm-hmm. as well. And mm-hmm. that that day, I was actually slightly fuzzy because i um we were doing this uh quite rigorous training at the time and i was oh. i think i think it was the adrenaline from i was ready that. for a drinking story no, <laughs> most of the days where the actors were fuzzy and were drinking stories <laughs> <laughs> that's usually what we get well there's some of that too i'm sure but i, I, mean, hmm. I think this is i think this is half a sleeping pill i'd never taken one before and i was like oh, oh wow, God. Was a little bit fuzzy but the um yeah, no, it was it was it was uh, it was a great day, and Rob Bailey really looked after us, and I think I'm I'm delighted with that that scene. It's, it's such a cool, you know. Um, it was uh, gorgeous. It was a yeah, gorgeous yeah. scene to yes, watch. Absolutely. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was certainly it was certainly good to do, and um, mm. yeah, I'm really pleased with how it came out. And it's sort of one of those heat moments, isn't it? You've got the sort of uh, two counterparts, um, you know gently challenging each other and Mm -hmm. reassuring that they will um reassuring the other that they will um you know slit their throat (laughs) if they step out of line so it's kind of um yeah it was really cool is that a reassurance (laughs) yeah they both said it in such in such uh genteel forms that's it that's it but no it it was it was interesting because it it kind of was i mean you you mentioned it before it's like there's overlap with their characters and it's sort of and, and even the dialogue it's there really nicely written um the, the fact that um you, you know that, that that woods is a sort of a an earlier version of, of uh, flint and um and, sure uh, yeah and, and, and flint, flint is an th- earlier version of woods rogers woods yeah woods rogers and it goes down that road in season four absolutely and they sort of yeah they both inform each other mm-hmm. um and it's uh, you know again it's the it's the nassau effect isn't it you, yes you can't you can't stay in that environment without it having an impact and um, wow i like that very much in the same way that uh, i mean literally the the british troops when they came over your whole crew were getting ill like they did on the island right. that's and right and that's and it, sort it, of and speaking it, to the infection that, that yeah. happens in that nassau yeah it's yeah it's sort of a contamination isn't it and if mm. it, and and only the strong will survive and in fact yes. hmm. in fact it, it goes one step further the the ones that do survive you know are brutalized right. by it and and the, you know wow. sort of these and we have in season four those sort of super soldiers who are you know they're they're, they're inoculated from their local diseases but they're they're also inoculated you know, from their humanity right yeah, yeah, they're exactly. readers. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting i was just having a conversation with one of our listeners um hi laura and uh, when we were talking about that, like talking about NASA as a frontier and how on the one hand, a frontier is a place that allows for people to do all sorts of wonderful things outside of the structures of of civilization. And that's, you know, kind of the depictions of sexuality and things like that that you see. Yeah. Then the flip side, the thing that makes it so interesting is they didn't let us just go into that fantasy of like the frontier is freedom, but also this flip side is that the frontier also becomes a burden to all of the characters. I mean, in season four, I felt like everyone was saying, damn it, this place is like destroying me. Mm-hmm. I mean, Anne in particular, but you know, it's like she was the one who was kind of most self aware about it. Well, and Eleanor, actually, we'd have to. We have to have a little chat with you about that. <laughs> oh, okay. I look forward to that. <laughs> um, so wait, I had a question before that, though. So you were talking a lot about, I thought it's fascinating that you wanted to, yeah, I, maybe Liz and I should totally fess up. I mean, our listeners know this, like we were super, super enamored with Woods Rogers. Like, into you? Yes. Yeah, in season three. <laughs> Well, you're very nice, well, Luke, but it was Woods Rogers. We yeah, were very excited yeah. about Woods Rogers um, <laughs> treating Eleanor in a way that we felt like other characters hadn't up until then. Like that Woods Rogers seemed to respect her more than, than in a way that yeah. she deserved and that nobody had really been giving her up until that point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, H- Hannah brought her, her, her own personal charms to it, but it, it which you sort of are, are unavoidable. Um, and But it's, 
I guess Woods Rogers was true. I, I saw him as a sort of a resourceful man, and mm-hmm. so, and he he um he didn't miss a beat really when it came to identifying useful assets. And um, certainly, yeah, I I know you're nah, it's just uh, my choice of words is terrible. Yeah. No, no, um, I mean it's totally true, and it's a world full of very pragmatic, smart people. So that's totally yeah, appropriate. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of exploitation that went on, but um, yep. it's, uh, yeah, and and that's it. And Careful, John Steinberg's going to beef with you. He beefed with Lauren Sarner about their relationship. <laughs> I really I'm so that. interested in this. No, keep talking. Yes, keep talking. Sorry, I interrupted you for a joke. Well, it's, yes, it, obviously it starts as it starts as one thing and, and, and evolves into something else, the, the, the respect, um, you know, and the intimacy and, and, and what the, the mm-hmm. close proximity and um, you know, it's very, very hot, um, hot costumes that they all wore, and um, you know, <laughs> um, uh-huh. but it, it, it sort of uh, no. It, it, at first, obviously, you know, we've we've, we've seen the show, so it's um, yeah, as you say, these are pragmatic people, and um, they use what's available to get advantage. And um, she was um, critical, and um, yeah, that, so that's. I mean, obviously. Uh, it evolves romantically, but um, initially it was very much um, she was the she was the key to unlocking um, you know the island. Yes. Did you know early on that they were going to pair Woods Rogers for a romantic counterpart to Eleanor, or, or did that surprise everyone? Um, I well, I, I I tell you what, I only had two scenes that I auditioned with, and it was the mm-hmm. um, the first scene uh, that you see uh, Woods Rogers in, and. Oh, I love um, that which scene. Obviously, yeah. obviously, a scene with with Eleanor with Hannah's character, yes. and the the other scene was the um, uh, was the uh, on board the ship when I'm sort of um, pointing out the other vessels. Uh, yes, Woods Rogers is and um, the willing and, and, mind. God, yeah, that's a great and, name for a ship. It's so good. I'm yeah, sorry, <laughs> it is, and 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 firing that warning shot across um, Hannah's um, or rather Eleanor's bow. By the way, these. Mm-hmm. Uh, nautical metaphors uh, they go on for years you can't <laughs> shake it, shake them off once you start um they really, really do but um it's so yeah that those are the two scenes so i i, I deduced from that and the fact that hannah was um uh, asked to come in and do a chemistry test with me well, oh yes. well nice. yeah so I, okay. I i was like aha Maybe. Yes, I'm no dummy. I know just, what you're doing. Yes. Just just maybe. <laughs> and so yeah, that that was the only heads up I had on that. But um it was mm-hmm. uh, I, I, you you asked me before and I didn't really give you a sufficient answer but the um did I know where it was going? No. I just hoped um that the writing would stay at that quality and I I I hadn't watched the show at this point. So and and that I had these speeches and they were just phenomenal speeches and I thought yeah. gosh if it stays at that level um, and they investigate this character. Um, this could be really, really exciting. And I have to say, you know, we all know. I'd like just hands up. Like they did it. They they kept it. Kept getting better, and richer, yes. and deeper, yeah. and more layered, and yet well thought out. And these, I mean, that was for me one of the um, challenges. I guess it always is, especially when you join a show halfway through. Is how do you enter a scene where they all these sort of um, fully fledged characters and come in as a as a whole human yes. um, who, who has their own backstory and um that that is that is the challenge to come in sort of all guns blazing and, and, and you know confident in your own skin so uh, fortunately it was aided by the the cast and crew who just made me feel so welcome I, honestly there's no the experience is sort of second to none really well, uh, and you had of, to play a character who was so carefully uh, constructing his own image of confidence throughout. Yeah, absolutely. We we had a lot of theories about the scar. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. I I mean, I guess this is the moment where I just compliment you for a second. Like your performance is incredible, and I one of the things I most appreciated about your performance is that I feel like um, you do an amazing job of of adding all of these subtle gestures that speak volumes to what the character's doing. Um, there are moments that just really floored me throughout. Um, a lot of them in the keel hauling episodes will have to go down that road. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. But yes, but we, we just, were just keep talking. This is lovely. Thank you very uh- much. <laughs> Well, I can I will get into specifics. Um, I mean, one of my favorites, actually, well, two of my favorites in the keel hauling are 
um, the way you use your hands. Well, actually, it's all about your hands. The way you use your hands. Um, the it's way all you, about your hands, Liz. Yeah, no, you're doing that. <laughs> My job. <dumb>. Liz. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Professional. Go ahead. That was a very serious comment. I'm sorry. It was. I ruined it. I'm sorry. I'll go back to drinking my wine. No, you made it. You made it a million times more funny. <laughs> Luke, I'm I'm famous for blushing during the podcast, true. which I am now doing. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, because because of the connection, I'm, you, you can't see that I am, but I am. Okay. okay, Liz, you made both of us blush, right? Yes, I win. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm going to say specifics now. Okay. Um, th- the way you waved off the the person who was who was treating your wounds. Um, Mm. the that I mean that clearly the director was understanding how amazing your hand motions were because there's that close-up of when yes. you told them to start and there was the close-up of your hand just so subtly uh, initiating the horrible horrible keel hauling yes. um, but my mm. favorite thing is after it's hard to say favorite things like you have not listened to our whole podcast so you don't know how terribly upset I was about teach um <laughs> I, I, yeah, I heard, I, yeah, I've, I've I've heard a few <laughs> moments from that. So yeah, yeah, we love teach a lot. But um, the readjusting of the rings, like just the, uh, I loved how your basically all of your hand motions were just in my eyes, and you can tell me how what your what you were intending to do there. But in my eyes, um, this was all about Woods Rogers. Um, it was performance, what we call pirate yeah. theater, but Woods Rogers isn't officially a pirate. Oh, I think privateer was, I think, theater? Uh, right, privateer theater. But I, it's interesting. I went to the Bahamas um, a few months ago because I wanted to see Nassau because mm-hmm. we, you know, we obviously, we shot this in South Africa. Right. I was curious. And um, I, I, I booked into a hotel and I was desperately trying to um, find, the, find the fort. And of course, it doesn't exist anymore. Right. But um, unwittingly, I had booked a room in a hotel that was standing on the foundations of the fort. Oh shit! No way. And in, wow. inside there was, um, you know, a little lovely little history on the wall. And um, and uh, the bartender came over to me as I was reading, you know, the little um, historical sort of um, tidbits. And um, he he just went through the faces, and there was Teach, and there's mm-hmm. Vane, and there's various wow. others. And and he just went pirate, pirate, pirate. And when he got to Woods Rogers, he he hit it um, with even more violence and said pirate i don't oh, care i, love I don't it. care that he was the governor and he didn't know what i did for a living I he didn't it. know and and he knew not, i was like this is that's incredible that's and he's bang on so cool okay I love so that. um yes. yeah All it's right. and he's as much pirate as any of them i think so i will call it pirate theater because we Go loved on, throughout the podcast to talk about pirate theater but my impression of what was going on in that scene was that woods i mean all in all of season four we mm-hmm. have so many characters trying to demonstrate power right. and demonstrate power through revenge. And I just felt like your hand motions were really the key. I, I mean, the looks you gave Jack also incredible, but, um, but the hand motions were really for me, what really expressed that Woods Rogers was so meticulously constructing an attitude of nonchalance to mm-hmm. show yeah, his power uh, which of course Absolutely. was completely destroyed by Teach. Not sorry about that. <laughs> Teach sorry, no, sorry. Messed yeah. up your mm. little act. <laughs> <laughs> did no absolutely it's a, a, absolutely a, a, a theatrical a pirate theatrical device yeah it was some um, to, to show that um i have you know the character had all the time in the world and mm-hmm. was going to draw this out and a consummate you know had consummate control so yeah that's that's what it was i mean part of these things are sort of subconscious you you do them because they feel right um mm-hmm. you know I, I i write a hell of a lot of notes on my scripts but i i, I I uh, possibly wrote adjust rings on there, but you know, it was something just to say, you know, um, I don't know. It just, it, it, the whole thing, it was, a, there was an inevitability to it and I wanted everybody to watch it. And of course, as you say, um, it, uh, it's theater that goes wrong and the audience turns against mm-hmm. the, you know, the, who he thinks is the, uh, is the lead actor in that moment. And, um, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the spot the spotlight shifts um, that's true to, to totally our, stole your thunder yeah he steals he steals the show he's it's a scene stealer yeah and he doesn't even say anything um but it's uh yeah no absolutely well I'm, I'm glad it worked i tell you what was really um 
useful for all of us on the day was some um, uh, role, some um, uh, playing of um, orchestral music. Actually, it was sort of a, a, a bit of choral stuff. Um, really? the, wow, while by, you all were doing it? Uh, yes. And uh, it was, I think it was principally because there's so many, you know, so many supporting artists and uh, they don't have as much information as, as uh, you know, as the, as the principal actors. Sure. And so this, um, he sort of played this um, in- incredible piece of music, and uh, forgive me, but it's the um, it's the singer from Gladiator, who uh, Roll is yes. a, a great great yes. fan of, uh-huh. and um, I think it's um, Gerard, isn't it? Some like Lisa Gerard, I think is. Anyway, I'll get that wrong on it. Forgive me, but um, no, no, it's fine. It, That's it's so uh, interesting. And he played that, and I I hadn't to be honest with you. It, it seemed like like some of the best ideas often do. You go, God, it's it's so simple. Why didn't we think of it? Um, but it was kind of a, 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 a masterstroke because there was this sort of hushed sort of pall of solemnity as we were yes. as we were as we were doing this. Mm-hmm. And um, that's incredible. And, and uh, you know, I had my own soundtrack. You know, I, I had my little Woods Rogers um, soundtrack. And what was, is that true? Was, Tell me more about this. What? Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. You know, it's like I. I, I you know, created a playlist because a, a lot of this stuff is, uh, and you know, that's what's so great about the show. I think is uh, it, it deals with really big emotions. I mean, yes. it's big stuff. It's life and death, pretty much every yeah. scene. Yep. Um, and <laughs> especially yet, every scene Woods Rogers in. <laughs> well, and but but also like what's great is this is really big stuff, and yet it's written with such a finesse by yes. the guys. So mm-hmm. um, that sort of mixture just makes for really good sort of theater really good drama and yeah i have i have, I have my own playlist but but role playing that it just absolutely and it, it it really focused everybody's attention and we were everyone was wrapped by the music because it's sort of yes. transcendent and you know it's so emotive um music especially you know classical the classical end of things and um it was just it was really everyone was feeling it and um and it, it, it was it was a great experience, um, and you know it was three long days, and I, I think it, it was the first time in a, in a while where, on a, on a side note, it, it sort of it does brutalise you playing those kinds of scenes, yeah. and um, I found myself quite, I just like a, a strange. I had a very strange sort of mood descended on me for that week because when you if you spend a week um, killing someone. It, it, you know, it 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 has not Brutally effect. killing someone. Yeah, and it just it, it takes you no, to it quite. Does, a, of course. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a dark place. So, um, you know, and then you you shake it off and you have a a, a rum and um, ginger beer with uh, with Luke Arnold and everything's all right again. But um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, no, it was it was a, a really a, a quite an important thing. And you know, hat off to Ray Stevenson as well because yeah. you know, aside from all the prosthetics and um, it it, it was. Um, it required a lot of patience uh, on his part, and he, he was, you know, an absolute gent um, doing all of that stuff. And it really felt like we were all connected. I mean, obviously, I hadn't worked with Ray at all um, oh, right. yeah. until that point, and um, you know, you're thrown straight into that. And it was emotional, I, I think, for him too, because he was very proud to be part of the show. Um, mm-hmm. He thought it came out really well, and and so you know, these are difficult scenes, mm-hmm. um, but it all played into it really, um, and and yeah. I'm very proud of how it came out. And Roel did a superb job um, coordinating it all. And, you know, Toby and Clara, it was a joy. Mm-hmm. It's my, that was, that's my only scene with Clara. And it just, um, yeah, it was, it was a really nice way to tie it all in together. And um, and obviously a bit of a gift for, for an actor like me to, to have that scene. But oh, No, it's amazing. I mean, I also love, I mean, yeah, there's just, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying I love it. Like I did actually complain on Twitter that I was about to watch it again after having sworn not to ever watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You glutton I, for punishment. Uh, <laughs> yes. Although I kind of want to say to all the listeners, like, damn, it's a good, it's a good scene. Like I watched it no, many it times. It's, it's very well done. It's amazing. And having... Um, I think it's about 15 minutes long too, isn't it? It's It's quite long. Um, It was arguably a little too long, but yes. Right. I could have done without the actual scraping under the boat part. That is the part that I could have, but you had to understand, like people didn't know what keel hauling is. Um, I didn't. I wouldn't have gotten it without that. I needed the 
and I yeah. I live near the I live near the water. Like our right. barnacles are an everyday part of life for me, mm-hmm. and not for many people. So like for me, I get it immediately. Like I've been scraped, not on my whole body, but you know, just a toe on yeah. a barnacle is bad enough to ruin your day. Um, so I get that stuff, but yeah, yeah so they had was, to do it. it, it also- yeah, and uh, it, it was. I thought the the sound actually was just really evocative because oh, it, it was very cleverly planned out that there were sort of th- three I versions usually, i usually listen with headphones that was the one time i regretted <laughs> yes yeah. which is a testament to how good it was but it was really good i also like i'm enjoying the, i'm just thinking about it i'm just enjoying the sort of like uh, the bittersweet irony that it was roll who is a you know dutch director and it was the Dutch Navy who invented uh, keel hauling. Oh, really? God. Wow. Yeah, I believe. I believe that's all. No, sorry. They didn't invent it. It was actually the Greeks who came up with it, I think, it's originally. It's that old. It's that old. But yeah. the, well, it du- makes the, du- sense. the Dutch Navy actually employed it. And right. it's kind of, I don't know. And it's weird the way they all employ, uh, They all talk about it as a punishment. I'm just like, that's kind of certain death, isn't it? Right. right. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to so. be. I mean, right. Um, the whole like going three times thing, not so realistic, I think. Um, I also, I mean, it's also an amazing scene because essentially it is just the most amazing and shocking continuation of the conversation between Woods Rogers and Jack Rackham. Like it's just, even though absolutely. they don't actually speak to each other. Um, I mean, and, and that's particularly on your side. Just, I, I love how... Woods Rogers is doing this thing, but in, in, in a lot of ways, it seems like he's doing it at Jack. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's, I think the performance is really for him. Yeah. It's, to, it's to teach him a lesson. And it's interesting because yes. there, was a, there was an exchange between the two of us. There was a, a, a verbal exchange between us um, that was scripted and it, and it fitted. Oh, but I think, I, th- I think they made a really good choice um, just to, you know, skirt around it. And um, because it, it, it really is, I mean, you know, some of these um, really violent scenes play much better, um, right. you know, in in that sort of vacuum, that sort of um, sound vacuum, and it was it was just clever. Not well, to yeah, because this felt it. this felt very much like an answer. You know, the the unspoken part of the carriage scene when Woods Rogers yeah. says, "There are things you leave out of your book." So, mm. speaking of Woods Rogers, absolutely. Book, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I love that line. So I feel like, you know, that was when we start, that was when we got the hint, right? Obvious, not a very subtle hint, like that Woods Rogers is like, hey, you know, you like me and all. I seem kind of dashing, but uh, I've got these other things that I don't tell you all about. Yeah. And I, I, I was, I, I thought that stuff was great. I mean, it was just, you know, so clever. And it, I, I, I felt a little bit vindicated because I was like, I knew there was more to him <laughs> than, than, than this. Like, yes, he was a competent sailor in the uh, early 18th century who happened to be this, 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 and this. And was um, really good at using Eleanor and Max to make really good plans for him. Like, I felt like in season three, there was a whole lot. I like that you, you said, like, that he's pragmatic and recognizes smart people because yeah. we definitely commented that we're like, okay, everything really smart he seems to be doing is like essentially Eleanor and Max coming up with it for him. <laughs> yeah no absolutely we should leave this whole thing to the ladies i mean it really was you kind know, they, of a they, theme of the show <laughs> yeah well and 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 kind of a theme of life i think but um <laughs> i mean well, yeah absolutely but um no it's it's it was very well put though it is a continuation of the conversation i think yeah between that's those how two. it felt to me yeah um, it is so I, we had a question there were two questions actually about the that part of season four one was actually when he shot Teach. So I think Liz and mm. I disagreed about the shooting. Initially, yeah. yeah. I also didn't watch it as many times as Daphne did, to be fair. Daphne watches it like four or five times before we would do each show. And my thing was kind of that I would come into it fresh. So there was some of it that I just didn't catch the first time. Well, I think also you wanted to still like him more than I did. I was, did. Re- I was ready to flip to, <laughs> to accepting Woods Rogers' and his darker side and you were like no 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 he's still like there's still redeeming qualities about him and then you know right. and thanks it was before Liz. We, thanks Liz. And you're well, so welcome luke i was always on your team yeah, yeah and then great. he went and then he went to havana so seriously like sorry luke you're a lovely person and woods rogers <laughs> is sometimes interesting and nice but so what are you what, what are you saying in the western space to sustaining getter uh what 
What am I saying? I was, I, I was just, that was a little, that was my little blast of Spanish. That was oh. The, I was just saying, <laughs> oh, 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 right. Which you learned for that, uh, right? Are, are you Somebody saying, told us that. You learned are you that saying that our countries are at war is all I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, sweetie. You know, a, a husband who knows his wife's deepest, darkest nightmare and then inflicts that on her. Not a great husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pushed the he, he he pushed the he pushed the button, didn't he? Um, and he really I think did. That's it's like, hey, yeah. I don't like what you're doing. Let me just reenact the, your childhood nightmare for you. Well, yeah, it's it's sort of part it's part petulant child, isn't it? Who who refuses to lose and yes. but it's also that thing. Like, you know, talking about how this this guy was um, that he was the right man for the job because, and I think mm-hmm. you know historically he was, and obviously uh, in the context of you know our show he he sort of is he's the guy who will go further than the other one right and um as a result you know he, he gets a sort of a a temporary and incredibly hollow <laughs> miserable victory yeah um so you know I, I i love all that stuff i think it's, no i do too i think it's so clever and of course you know then there's a, a, that's a that's a continuation not he's not winning any husband awards no that's it and and and, and by <laughs> doing that it's sort of a a terrible continuation of of their sort of um, lovers tiff, really. It's yeah. their bickering and their different um, to to the same thing, and um, has tragic consequences. Basically, the message is never cross the ladies. Just yep. don't do it. Yep. So yeah. So back to the shooting. Like my reading of shooting him shooting Teach was that he had constructed this beautiful theater, and Teach wasn't was you know upstaged him basically, and so the shot was like, I'm done. I can't deal with this anymore. Like this isn't working how I, but what, so what's your, what was your reading of the shot? Well, I, I think he's, um, he's aware that the, the, again, nautical metaphor, the tide has turned against him <laughs> and um, he, he needs to an end to it. Um, it it's uh, you know, he, he feels public opinion um, turning against him and it, it, he wants to shut that down. Yeah. Wh- whose opinions then specifically does he feel turning against him? Oh well, everyone on board. I mean, his own men, his own know, men, his own crew. Glances, right. yeah, his own crew, his own soldiers. Um, I, I think that um, as Rogers as I see him, I mean, I know he he does very bad things, but they're sort of it, it, he becomes the necessary evil in season four mm-hmm. um, to get things done. And um, it, it, he, um, what was I going to say? He he's um, yeah, he definitely feels he feels that pressure, and I think he he he's also still um a, a humanitarian and uh, uh, he he realizes that he has gone too far so it, it just has to end and he's putting teach out of his misery i think he starts to feel re- i think he I'm starts winning. to feel remorse this is what i thought and now i feel vindicated because the whole oh, internet does. was like no he, liz he, he, for he me it was he, giving up and for liz it was it was about mercy Sorry. uh yeah no he's not giving up no he, absolutely not i mean i i think he finds himself out there on the frontier alone and it's um he, he he's lost his humanity and in yes. that moment and he, he realizes what's happened he's an intelligent man and he knows that he has become the thing he hates and so um he has to put you know this sort of injured i don't want to call him an animal but you know out of its misery it's yes. like the way the way he's executed is like um uh, putting a you know putting a horse out of its misery um yes and it's yeah i i i thought it was i, I love it i love all this stuff because it is so multi-layered um but mm-hmm. these you, you know he, he he doesn't have anything personally against these men no but he's right committed he's committed himself to a course of action a demonstration of strength um to deter i mean it's essentially it's a deterrent isn't it he, yes you, you, you hang people you punish them you shoot them um, as a governor, um, in order to demonstrate to the masses that this kind of behavior cannot continue. Um, and of course, in, he, he goes too far and he gets swept up in it and he realizes he's become the monster that he yes. professes to be hunting. And um, it's a, yeah, it's a, but on it's the a very side, scary, cool moment. The story of what he did to the Spanish ship, which was, which was to show no mercy. Uh, Absolutely. Um, again, that's what he. I think he's. A, I mean, you know, I, I hope I played it like this. I think he's. A, he's not afraid of it, but he is aware of you know his own demons, that's his inner right. demons. He 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 is he is a he is a violent man. He's capable of great violence, right. but really only when spurred onto it by um, 
you know, emo- an emotional scenario. People who are close to him are threatened, um, it, whether it be his brother who is killed or his wife whose life is hanging in the balance. And um, that's when he has these uh, sort of monumental outbursts of aggression. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's never, you know, it's never just sort of um, war as a, you know, a continuation of um, diplomacy by other means. It's, it's, it's not... It's not that simple. It really is when when his heartstrings are, you know, um, affected. That's that's when he goes all out, sort of um, nuclear. If you like. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is so um, fascinating. Like he really is a parallel to Flint, more so than I. I mean, I think back then I was really seeing him as a parallel to different characters. But if anything, I'm starting to think that you know, in season three, we're introduced to Teach and we're introduced to Rogers. Those are the new characters in season three. And I always right. thought that it was really significant that we get both of them at the same time. And now that I'm thinking about it, right, and then of course, you know, this you have this showdown between the two of them in four oh three. Um yeah. and I, I what I remember thinking at the time that it was really interesting that, you know, in the cold open at the beginning of season three, what we get is teach, right? And we have I had this whole theory about their cold opens that they like to subvert whatever we thought we learned last season. Like all the things we kind of got comfortable with in the season before they subvert sure. in the cold open. And so with teach, it was subverting like that. We, we had kind of at that point decided who are pirates and who are not pirates. And then the introduction of teach kind of messed with that because they introduced the people boarding his ship in the way they usually do pirates. But in fact, he was the fierce pirate there. And the interesting difference between two of them is like you start out thinking that Teach is the, you know, he's Blackbeard. He must be the, you know, the crazy, unreasonable, um, you know, dangerous person that we can't predict. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Roger seems the really reasonable person who can be so smug and so and so reasonable and thoughtful and pragmatic. But then it this does get completely flipped is that it turns out that Rogers is actually the one who's much more like Flint that when emotional can become super, super dangerous and teach, you know, he has the one emotional tie to Vane, which does tempt him to be, to be not smart when he's trying to get revenge. But ultimately Mm -hmm. like, I feel like teach is actually one of the more stable characters of all of them. Yes, absolutely. Um, Yeah. I've no, I've, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just like this all just kind of fell into place for me. But the thing that I started to ask about when I got distracted by by your use of your hands as Wood Rogers is the scar. We had, I think this started with one of our listeners, um, Kim. Hi, Kim. This idea that you were maybe using the scar, that you were perhaps using um, which side of your face that you were showing at different moments, that the scar, like that the scarred side and the not scarred side kind of represented woods rogers duality oh sure absolutely and and that's you know i mean history gave us that i mean the man had the scar so he is sort of a, a you know a, not a latter day but a, a, a an earlier day um kind of two-faced he has mm-hmm. you know, yes. two dimensions and um there is a, there is a dark side to him and i think you know it's testament to the, the terrific work of the dop's um you know david luther and gavin struthers that um that they, they they found great ways to uh, illuminate the appropriate side, yes. um, you know, with with their very clever, very very um, sort of evocative um, lighting. So it was um, yes, absolutely. And I you know I was conscious of that. Um, you know, you, uh, I I can't I can't steer I can't steer all of that, but it's it's there. It's sort of in mm-hmm. the, yeah, it's in the makeup of the man, if you like. But um, yeah, the this, this, this scar um, it, it is used. There were early scenes where I'm talking to Chamberlain mm-hmm. and I remember um, w- wanting to turn on a particular line and just as a, a, as a little reminder, you know, I think he, he talks about the scar, but I, I remember, um, you know, keeping it light until it's not light. And then you just, mm-hmm. all you need to do is turn your face and it sort of sells the, uh, the, the, the threat of something else. Um, but we don't know what it is yet. And we don't know what caused that, and, you know, I don't know why scars, uh, they do, though, um, certainly in TV shows, they sort of can spell, you know, something sinister. Um, yes. When, in fact, mm-hmm. it's, an, it's an accident or something, you know, <laughs> unfortunate that's happened to you. But right. in, 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 it just it, it shows um, uh, a, a different history 
doesn't. But in the case of Woods Rogers, I mean, that exactly that story that he tells to Berenger about his revenge on the Spanish crew, like the scar is very specifically, I think, you know, every, every, every character in Black Sails is very much um, their motivations are rooted in their backstories. Um, this is yeah. just something that the show really, really plays out. Like when people are motivated by their backstories, some people manage to like overcome that motivation, kind of heal mm-hmm. their their wounds, yeah. their their metaphorical wounds. Yeah, sure. <laughs> much, Rogers, much like life, right? Woods mm-hmm. Rogers has actual physical reminder of the backstory mm-hmm. that I think is laid out as the thing that motivates you know the the violent side of him. Um, and so I love that, I, I love that, that all of you made that choice and that you were yeah. very consciously doing that. It's, it came across that way. We just never were sure that well, it that's great, was isn't it? If you special. were never quite sure. And I think, I think that's um, one of the interesting questions um, that we were all asking is, um, you know, has, has the island brutalized, um, Woods Rogers or actually, um, do we just after time see the mask slip? And find um, out who he really is. Yeah. Um, so, it, and and that was a, an interesting question for me, and an interesting question for the the writers and, and everybody. And and of course, the um, his opposite number, the the the, uh, the anti heroes of the show, the pirates. That they're, they're not sure either. And it's sort of you, you, we're all learning more and more about these characters as the as the stories continue. But yeah, it was definitely I mean, it was sort of a gift. Um, mm-hmm all of that stuff and the, 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 the scar, because he's, he's very well, he, that's, I, mean, I remember Toby commenting on it actually, when we did the scene um, on the beach, he, he said very kindly, and this is really down to the, um, to the hair and makeup department and that beautiful wig that they gave me. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it's sort of, uh, yeah, it's sort of like he's, he's doled up like a, a kind of a, an early matinee idol, but then there's this scar and you mm-hmm. go, Oh, he's, yeah, he's that, that guy but I don't I, yeah we're not quite sure who he is and you, you know you've hit upon that and I I rather like that um and it's uh it's when you're un, under intense pressure you sort of learn a lot about people don't you yes and um and I, I yeah but I did like that it was a it was always a um you know these these barbaric acts were sort of not just a demonstration of force um in order to enforce the law and in order to deter people from doing bad things but actually they had um you know, uh, an emotional foundation that came from a, 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 an emotional place. Right. And I, I think that's that's what's great about it because these guys talk about these lofty concepts of um, democracy and, you know, on board the ships and on the island. Um, but when it boils down to it, um, people act according to their hearts, don't they? And, um, you know, that's it, it was great to have all those, all those dimensions. And it, and it ma- makes it very much play- more playable. And I'm glad it was, you know, not fleshed out is the wrong expression because, but just they, you know, these guys are writing human beings. Yes. And, um, yeah, right. it's really good. It's really fun. Yes. There's, yeah. I mean, we've said this many times, like more human beings than I feel like I've ever actually necessarily seen depicted on television. Yes. Even though sure. they're oh, separated yeah. from us by some of them being fictional and even the historical ones being so far away from us in time and experience. Um, yeah. the human human truths there are so strong that's mm. yeah absolutely they really are and you know kudos to all the rest of the cast because some of those relationships are just fascinating and, and, and complex and yet eminently recognizable and yes. you know very really m- modern um, but it's not modern is it it's sort of timeless it's, it's like timeless we, that's right. a great word we, yes how yeah. we relate to each other and it's really yeah, it's a, it's it's great, and um, I, I love. There's an article about the um, uh, the d- depiction of um, you know, sort of all, all these the different varieties of relationships, and I think the, the show does that so yes. well. That um, was that was that article was our friend Lauren, who's been on the show quite that's a few right. times. She's amazing. That's right. It was Lauren. It was Lauren. It was brilliant. Yes. It was brilliant. Yeah. So, Luke, did you have an opinion one way or the other um, about which was true of Woods Rogers if he did? lose sight of himself as his time in NASA went on and began to unravel a bit, or if it was a mask slipping, if that was his true self all along? Um, I, well, I think, you know, we, it, fortunately you do sort of, it, he's not just, it doesn't come out of nowhere. I mean, we, mm. we do see where it's coming from. Um, I, I just rather like the fact that there's, 
different dimensions um, to him. And um, yeah, I'm not sure I've ever answered it for myself, to be honest. It's, mm-hmm. um, I, I think it's a combination of the two. Um, and, but he has, he's a man of like fierce passions, let's yes. say that. And, mm-hmm. um, Eleanor, you know, is his, is, you know, is, is everything. And uh, his brother, you know, we're all familiar with these tropes, aren't we? Like family and your loved ones. That's, mm-hmm. you know, you're, um, but I, I didn't, I know I didn't walk around. Um, I certainly didn't go through season three and season four thinking, oh, I can't wait to, you know, show that I'm actually the devil. Right. It, mm-hmm. I don't think he is. I think, um, I think he, again, he was almost scared of it. And I think there's, yes. you know, this, this great contemplative moment when he's um, considering his book. Um, oh, right. Before, that was the other before question. Before he goes off. Right. Because he, he, he knows what he's capable of. And I think it's, I mean, I, I, I can only compare myself to it. Like sometimes when you walk in the dark, I, I have this notion, oh God, I'm going to freak myself out now and probably um, <laughs> you, but you just, I mean, I, I think, I think it's fairly common, but when, when you're scared, I kind of try and um, visualize and envisage myself being more frightening than the thing I'm frightened of. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I think when Woods Rogers is, when, you know, in the character in the, in the show is looking at his book, it's like, He's stealing himself and, um, you know, galvanizing himself for the fight ahead and because he, he knows what he's capable of. But he also knows it's rather like, you know, the Kraken. You, you, once you unleash it, it's sort of, uh, you know, by definition, out of control. And right. so I think he's, he's considering that. I certainly was sitting there, you know, trying to summon those thoughts. And, and I was thinking, you know, uh, th- this is <laughs> that moment where you have to, become that thing that you think you've locked away um and he yeah it's it, it's very dangerous and um you know obviously you can't share that with eleanor she's going to worry and and um mm. also she wouldn't like this person because it's yeah. not the person she's fallen in love with so yeah <laughs> I, I, it, it was the, the book and i think he's i mean you know i love these references and it's sort of the the, the guys did a great job in the carriage scene and say you know um yeah, there are certain things you leave out of the book uh, otherwise you wouldn't be invited to, to parties or I think I changed it to dinner parties just to make it even more sophisticated but they uh, <laughs> did you did you was that a, was I, that a I, bit yeah, of ad lib I, I, I embellished that word um, I, <laughs> I think I got away with it um, <laughs> the guys, I think the you guys, did the guys are, are pretty um, I don't want to say prescriptive but they they write such brilliant stuff that yes. it's, yeah. you know it, it, in some jobs it's a case of filling in the gaps and in in, in this instance it's about rising to the occasion so i'm mm. like eternally grateful to those guys well, it just it was brilliant stuff we do have to congratulate you then because we were aware of how few ad lib moments there are in this whole four seasons so if you oh, managed yeah. yes. to slip a word in there well done <laughs> Yeah, there you go. But, um, no, it's, <laughs> no, I'm it's, so glad you brought that up because, I mean, we had definitely talked about in that episode, had talked about the fact that Woods Rogers was looking at his book. His book, I mean, books are characters in the show. Like books are so important as language between characters. But Woods Rogers' book in particular ends up being something that so many different characters interact with because Maddie also holds it mm, and the Woods Rogers and, yeah. and Rackham talk to each other about it. Um, and yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. And, you know, it's, it's a really good um, connective thing. I think they did it very well. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah, another, another one of my favorite of your minute moments was in the carriage when, when Jack starts telling his story, how you uh, didn't close your book, but you marked your sp- your place with it with your finger <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad you noticed that. oh my god i loved that. that so much that was the most subtly dismissive thing i think i had seen in the whole show <laughs> it was amazing yeah, my, my, my folks still um, on there and i don't know i had some notion of like you know my, my story will continue i can come back to this later you my <laughs> friend cannot oh, shit. <laughs> of course <laughs> That was that was sort of what was going through my mind, um, oh, but uh, you know, it, and I hope I hope a, a mild, a, a, a teeny tiny dose of uh, irritation at being interrupted as well. Absolutely, <laughs> like, um, no. Okay, you... you're, you're clearly not going to let me continue reading um, to to pass the time. It was brilliant, and then also cool. the fact. I mean, then the direction he took the conversation, where he's like, yeah. "Dude, seriously, don't be so proud of yourself." Like, I almost had you. 
So yeah, yeah the back and forth of that. Just, ah, yeah. It's just a glorious scene. It really, really is. It was good. It was good. So, and just always working with Toby is a joy. It's a joy. He just raises the, you know, I, I, I swear I, I, I'm, I get more intelligent when I'm around him. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think everyone does. It's the process of, of osmosis. I'm just like, Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think that, I think that is the, actually the natural state of being around Toby Schmitz. Yeah. yeah. Um, or sometimes blushing. Um, so... <laughs> I think I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you would like a good laugh, listen to our episode with him. Um, so wait. let's let's talk let's talk a little bit about um, you know we talked about Woods Rogers like what affected him before Eleanor's death, but let's talk about those few episodes afterwards. I mean that for me was the the super like that was kind of the the topping on I'm trying to think of a metaphor and I'm not coming up with a good metaphor but like that was <laughs> that was the best part of the parallel to Flint like he was kind of like you know I could all kind of say oh well he's a parallel to Flint but not a parallel to Flint but then you know the whole it felt to me like you know I lost my love and now I just want everything to burn mm-hmm. so I don't know if that's really what was going on that's what it seemed like to me because it definitely seemed to me like that was the point when Woods Rogers went from being pragmatic yeah. to not so pragmatic no exactly and I think there's a you know again a, a, a less than healthy dose of um self-loathing in there yes. um, so yes. you know he sort of wants to, he wants to, I suspect there's an element of he wants to be at the center of the fire um mm you know and and go down with it it's because all all is all all is lost like he's spiritually broken Um, and everything that he was doing it for um is gone and you know he's lost his cause and all he's left with is this sort of you know the 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 charred um shell of the of of his mansion careful with your word choice there (laughs) uh charred eleanor that just made me sad oh yes I'm sorry, sorry, sorry listeners we're not laughing at dead eleanor we're very sad about dead eleanor and that was that was phenomenal that was phenomenal that the, the fly on the i mean just on on the glassy eye it was just incredible oh my god no and yeah. also you i mean i think i complained i think i did actually complain in when we were covering that episode where i was so angry at woods rogers and just that look on your face when you're with her and i'm just like damn it Stop making me feel bad for him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a thing, though, isn't it? Like when you're playing these characters, you, they, they, people do very bad things, but they're they're, they're human at the, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And and that's you know, as the actor, obviously, you, that's your job to um, to get into the skin of, the, of these yes. people and, and em- empathize with them, no, no matter what yep. state of play they're in. And um, yeah, so it I, worked I mean, really. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's 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 a gift. It's such a such a clear journey. Um, you know, obviously you can play it however you like, but there was such a, a just a truly um, great arc to play, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, that's why I mean, it's four seasons. I mean, I could have gone back to South Africa and shot that for the next five or ten years, but. It Break actually, our hearts, yeah. yeah actually, <laughs> Don't talk about yeah. that. That just makes us sad. No, but I <laughs> feel like it was so selfishly on a personal level. I just was like, this is, it, it's gone on such. I, my character in in a relatively short amount of time, two seasons, like goes on such a journey, yes. such an odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, while everyone else within the show, and you know, brilliantly portrayed by everybody, and they're all going on an odyssey, and it's just mm-hmm. you. And I love the way it all ties it in. I just think it's you know. It's fantastic the way you know all our ways cross and then finally link together and it, it just yeah it was, it was just deeply satisfying and I hope it, you know I think it was satisfying for the guys too to to really be given that creative control and to and to not wrap things up but sort of tell it the way they want to tell it and yeah. it just kind of you know the right tempo it didn't overrun it just it's still rich and it leaves you hungry for more and I think that's mm-hmm. sort of um just the way to do it yep. just the way to do it absolutely yes no i mean that's that's the thing it's it's a beautiful creation that is beautiful from its start to its end which is yes. an amazing thing it's a rare it's a rare thing to see yeah it's a rare thing but uh, yeah i mean it's, it's so it was so nice to be in something that you know i, I took a genuine interest in and i was like oh my god i'd watch this even you know, <laughs> yeah. 
even if they hadn't kindly employed me to you know, <laughs> pop up in it. But yeah, it's it was really good, really good. Um, and um, yeah, just there we go. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's Same wonderful. Thing. That's cute. Isn't it wonderful? Aren't we, darling? <laughs> it's like we've been doing this together for a while. I, so I think we, 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 we've established we all quite like black sales. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, it seems like we're in, we're totally in agreement about that. But it's so great to hear that from everyone who's been involved in the show, just everyone saying that yes. it's some of the best work they've ever done, that they're so proud of what it was. Um yeah that every everyone it, it seems like it's set apart i suppose which it certainly is for us um uh, but that's gosh that's yeah, just it was, gorgeous it, it, you know, it really was like to see all of those people the dedication from everybody was like mm-hmm. it's really impressive and um you know it spurs you on to to bring your a-game um that's what they said about you i hope you know luke yes that oh. Tush, yes, no, they did. They did said they? very often, yes, we heard over and over again how much people respected your process and your mm-hmm. work and that if you were in a scene with Luke, you better know what the shit you're doing because yep. he does. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. I like that. <laughs> that's it. Liz, I think like our, our new hobby should be just be transferring compliments from some of the actors to some of the other actors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, no, they talked very much about how much you wrote notes in your scripts yeah. and how you're incredibly yeah, prepared and very thoughtful. Yes, I've we had, did hear that. 17, 17 years of teasing for writing on my scripts. They, they're these weird, like, dog eared, coffee um, stained, <laughs> sort of um, t- tatty things that everyone's <laughs> so tempted to throw out. Oh, they look like man. Yeah. It's, Can it's, I ask time, you some but... of the things that you that you would write in your margins and in your scripts? What were the things that um, I'm very interested in the process in general? Um, I, I, I'm just, gosh, is that a very all, personal all... question? No, not at all. No, very it's personal, actually. No, I mean, some just like you know, try not to, try not to hit Zach again. Um, things like that. <laughs> try not to wait. When did you hit Zach? <laughs> oh yeah, we, we 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 hammered each other in that fight scene at the end of three. I um, love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. I. I <laughs> I, I wasn't wasn't revenge, honest. Um, yeah, I, I I caught him with the. I mean, you know, it's a it's a rubber stick essentially. The, right. The, the piece of the um the uh, the wheels um, spoke from the carriage, but it was actually got it's got a metal rod in the middle uh-huh. of it. And obviously, you know, I um uh, <laughs> don't don't you don't make full impact. You kind of retract it at the last minute. Right. Um, but of course, there is some contact, and um, Zach's pretty pretty tough guy he's like pretty extreme pretty tough guy um sweetheart as you know we um do. and yes. it, but it was it was a great it was a great honor to work with him um and to, to do a like a such a physical scene with him because he's you know he's the consummate professional and he, he really invests in it and like nothing's crazy enough for zach so <laughs> we you know it was kind of fun hammering him with uh um with that with that rubber spoke but um yeah uh-huh. course, I'm catching the same spot necessarily you have to for continuity and right. um, <laughs> at one point even Zach cried out don't hit me again <laughs> <laughs> we got another Zach McGowan impression <laughs> Luke you have now we did not prompt this you have now continued our run of every single actor doing a Zach McGowan impression right, while right, being right, interviewed okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but, but, but he but he he got his revenge because I I I, caught, I clipped him on the hand um, one time because of course you do these things again and again and adrenaline's coursing yeah. through you right. and we had a you know a, um, a small herd of um, horses bearing down on us so you've got to get the timing just right and you know it's the end of the day and you know it's carriage sequence for whatever it's a week and this was the final you know, doing well, this is the, the final piece de resistance. And, and, um, we, unfor- unfortunately at the last second, they re-blocked on the last pass. They just needed me to elevate my head more for the, for the shot. And, um, we all agreed that's what we're doing, but we hadn't rehearsed it. And um, uh-huh. as a result, um, Zach punched me in the face on, <laughs> on the last, on the oh, last, shit. uh, uh, on the last take, but I've never, I've never seen anything like it. The way you sort of like, sort of <laughs> to me after we've been, oh my god, <laughs> he's like all over. It. It's, it's such a sweetheart, but um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we, we 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 had a good time. <laughs> it was good, and um, 
yeah, I can't really remember what the question was, but oh, it was about you write what notes you write on your scripts. <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah, it was don't, don't exactly. We'll hear about you know you and Zach McGowan coming to fisticuffs anytime. It's fine. Yeah, we're, we're totally yeah, totally no, it's okay. okay with that. Oh. All, all sorts of things. I write everything. I don't, you know, as I was asked, I just did a film um, in the UK and they said, what's, what's, what's your process? And I was like, I, you know, I don't know. I learned a bunch of stuff at drama school. I've learned more on the job and I just sort of pick and choose all the best bit. Mm-hmm. It's like action, um, a line, what I, what I, what my intention, sometimes I write down the subtext of what the guy's uh-huh. really feeling as a saying. Sometimes I, I write, you know, a, a dash and an in, as in I really want to come in on a hard interruption. Sometimes it's technical, sometimes it's emotional. I just write. I just write every time I go to the script. I find it it helps me learn. I think as well because you sort of sure that makes it's, sense. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a multiple approach. So every time I pick up the script, I have a different idea about it, and it's about ideas, I suppose. And so by the time you get to set, you can play because you've thought about it from so many different angles. You've kind of ruled out the bad ideas and hopefully kept in a few of the good ones and on the day something else entirely happens but you've kind of given yourself permission because you've thought about it (laughs) and um and that's it that's it and that's i sort of write those sorts of things and sometimes i just doodle and sometimes i find that someone else has doodled for me helpfully (laughs) Uh, (laughs) (laughs) toby's business is like just such a beautiful artist as well as oh my goodness. what an, what an annoying what an annoying individual right um, seriously right i know yeah, yeah. well he's also coming. luke arnold kind of annoying oh yeah yeah he's, oh yeah he's terribly annoying he's so annoying yeah. that um i went out for drinks with him last night he's oh. that annoying mm. um we and i actually i asked him to crash this interview and he's like oh man and, um, he's going back <laughs> off to the uh Oh, mate, you know, what a shame. And he's like <laughs> jumping on a plane first thing this morning. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you've heard t- Tom Hopper going, yeah, right. <laughs> he's, always, he's always mimicking poor old Luke. <laughs> but Luke's all right. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good one. Hopper is the one. He's the surprise. Really? Um, sort of oh, tell in, us Tom Hopper's stories. He, he definitely oh, no, surprised he's just, he's, us in our interview. I was worried yeah, that he's, he he's... wasn't going to have a sense of humor about our little Twitter game we did about him, but he loved it. Oh yeah, of course. No, he's a he's a lovely, gentle giant. That man, <laughs> they're good people. You're waiting for some Tom Hopper reveal, aren't you? No, it's okay. <laughs> no, you're it's quite all good. Right. You just actually you were just taking a moment to consider him and his and his. Uh, no, his no, and we definitely don't want we don't want anything that will destroy his status as official Fathoms Deep Cinnamon Roll. Billy Bones uh, may not be a cinnamon roll anymore, but Tom Hopper, in our eyes, always. pretty much a darling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us, tell us what you've been up to since Black Sales. I have seen stuff on Twitter, but I've not watched stuff on television. Will you tell us about what you've been doing? You did just talk about a movie. Do you want to tell us what that is or other stuff? Yeah, sure. Very quickly. I mean, yeah, I, I, I just I did a. Um, I dipped into a comedy over in the UK. I've just, I don't know what genre it is. It's sort of a femme fatale. Let's call it a, a, a bunny boiler Ooh. flick. Um, but it's my kind of favorite kind of caper. It's one of those sort of, it reminds me of those, um, you know, things like Fatal Attraction and stuff like that. And it was a really lovely cast. Um, I sound like such a lovely, really lovely cast. But they were really great actors that I was working with. It, it was an independent film, so it wasn't a huge time commitment. Um, and which is good because it, Actually, everyone's very busy, and I'm I'm going off to um, uh, Hungary um, in about just a week, but two weeks um, for six months to do season two of Ransom, which is a CBS show that I that I head up, I suppose, um, and which is about a, a negotiating team, and you know, thoroughly wow. enjoyable and a, a far removed from you know um, from back sales, but it's. Uh, yeah, it's 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 super cool, and I'm so I'm excited to get back on board that. I really want to see that. So that's six months. You do that for six months at a time. Wow. So wow. it's a little bit faster than um, the way we shot Black Sail, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's there's there's, there's Larry Technics and galleons and um, you know sharks, and <laughs> so you know <laughs> we, we can afford to take it go a bit quicker. <laughs> Wow, and you shoot that? Did you shoot that last yeah. season also in Hungary, or this season will be in Hungary and last season was somewhere else? 
it was in Toronto. Uh huh. One is in Hungary. Um, and wow, Budapest. that's incredible. Actually, very excited to go and visit. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're uh, keeping keeping out of trouble, more or less. <laughs> Fair enough. Keeping you in just enough trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, no, I, exactly. Well, I keep I keep I keep reconnecting with them. Um, with uh, all the pirates, so um, you know, there's there's still trouble to be had. <laughs> we were, yeah, we we're, were quite a tight knit bunch. I'm, yes. I'm very pleased to say. So that that goes on. That goes on. We, yeah, we, that sense of community has carried on after the show. It's yeah. really great. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Absolutely has. Yeah. It's it, it is. I think it is a rare thing. I mean, you do as you go through. You know, you, you do make connections and, and form relationships and friendships and and. Uh, one or two sort of carry on and 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 then but with this one it's like it, it's just amazing like we really are in touch i think it was a, a very it was a great it was a great unifying bonding experience i guess we were all far away from home and, and right you know, um we we needed each other um on and off set mm-hmm. and um yeah it was a, a great experience i think everyone is rightly proud of their work it just mm-hmm. did such a good job and and um yeah, yeah it was a it was a hell of a thing um and um yeah loved it mm, that's wonderful well thank you so much for your work that you did on that show yes, god you're absolutely good. it yes. was i mean uh, you yeah. came out from the guns we're like we're supposed to hate this guy and i can't help but love him the whole way through so even when you were at your worst and most dastardly those complexities that you talked about and those um that sense of of remorse and and that fear of of the release of the worst of you coming out or the worst of Woods Rogers coming out rather played beautifully. <laughs> not, not you, Lindsay. <laughs> no, Lonely, probably. But yes, it came through beautifully. I so I it. appreciate. I don't have it anything, like, anything like that kind of depth. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I Thank appreciate you it. so much. Seriously, we uh, oh, well, we were we so wanted to chat with you, and we're so happy mm-hmm. we did. Okay, well, thank you. It's been absolute absolute joy. Very nice talking to you. Steve is a Common Room Radio production. For more information and access to other programs, please visit us at commonroomradio.com. To show your support, pledges of as little as a dollar a month can be made to patreon.com slash commonroomradio. Join the conversation by using the hashtag FathomsDeep and follow us on Twitter at Black Salescast. We ask that you keep your tweets respectful and positive and please avoid spoilers. If you have more to say, we want to hear it in all its spoiler glory. Email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com with Fathoms Deep in the subject line. Thanks for listening. Sorry, Luke. Now you get now you get to hear me Good be bossy because I'm the yes. one who edits this thing. That's what that's why I get to be a little bossy when yeah. about recording. I like that. <laughs> She's my captain. Uh, yes, I guess so. That's what everyone keeps saying. I don't know. <laughs> you like it. <laughs> I don't think you guys are supposed to flirt with each other. I think it's uh, the guests. Oh no! Oh, no. Is, <laughs> oh no! That is an essential part of our podcast. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> or I've been doing it wrong this whole time. <laughs> this is really, I don't know if you know that this is very funny for me because every time one of you laughs, it cuts to that person's um, image yes. Yes. and then it, it's, so it's swinging back. So it's like a wonderful <laughs> symphony of laughter and it's cutting back and forth between the two of you. It's really kind of, <laughs> it's very entertaining. Welcome to Fathoms Deep. <laughs>